Hey guys, welcome to our Fit Family and your 21 Day Fix Challenge Group. In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare to meal prep. Before you can even go to the kitchen and start cooking something to eat on this program, you have to figure out one, how much food to get, two, what type of food to get, and then of course you have to actually go to the grocery store and get it. So this will just walk you quickly through how I plan my shopping list each week before I head off to the grocery store and face all those temptations that lurk in that building. The first thing you're going to need is your 21 day fix eating plan. Turn to page four where you will go through the calculation to determine what your calorie range is. Once you've completed this, turn to page 19 where you will find your calorie range across this yellow line and determine how many of each color of container that you get per day on your meal plan. For me, it's this column. So what I want you to do is we're going to make a shopping list. Okay, so get a piece of paper and write down the color container category and how many of each of those containers you get in a day. Start there. Okay. The reason I want you to do this is because, like I said at the beginning, to be able to be successful with this program, you have to know how much food you need to get and how much of each type of food you need to get so that you don't go to the grocery store and buy a whole gob of stuff and end up with nothing to match the requirements for your containers. Okay. So I'm a huge fan of not, uh, spending a fortune to eat healthy. I'm also a huge fan of making sure that I use anything that's in my fridge so that food doesn't go to waste. So what I recommend you do is when you're preparing your shopping list is to start by looking in your cabinets and your fridge before you go to the grocery store and see what you already have in your house that fits into each color coded container category and then head off to the store only to supplement that um, and round out your selection of foods for the week. Okay. So I'm just going to take you through my example food list or shopping list for the week. Um, that is composed of what I already have in my house as well as what I need to get at the grocery store. Okay. So here we go. As an example, this is my 21 day fix food list. So in the green category, I get three servings per day. You do the math, three servings a day for one person times seven days is 21 servings of produce green greens uh, for just one person. So since Kevin and I both do this, that's a lot of produce to have on hand in any given week. So if I'm trying to make this last for the entire week, um, I'm going to have a lot of vegetables in my, in my fridge. But so when I look at my, what's in my fridge already, um, in there we had kale, spinach, and frise lettuce. Um, we had carrots, we had a head of cauliflower, uh, some zucchini, and some acorn squash. So when I'm thinking about what I'm going to make for the week, I'm going to take all those lettuces and I'm definitely going to make some salads. Um, I may cut up those carrots to have as an afternoon snack. The cauliflower head we will definitely roast and use that as a side item for um, dinners. The zucchini, um, I have this neat little tool where you can shave those down into noodles. So if we wanted to make like a fake pasta salad. Um, and then the acorn squash is really easy to roast as well. So from a vegetable standpoint, I have a lot of different options here that I can either just eat them as is as side items for my meals or, you know, mix them together to make them into the primary course of a meal, like say a salad for lunch. Okay. Red category, same thing. Go through my fridge first. And what do I have on hand? Um, I get four red containers per day. So I want to make sure that I have quite a bit of protein available. Uh, to make sure that I have enough servings for the entire week. So what goes in the red category? Shakeology. We have eggs on hand. We had a whole chicken in the freezer. We had chicken breasts in the freezer. We have a couple of packages of uh, albacore tuna in the cabinet. And of course we have a big tub of Greek yogurt. So from that standpoint, how I might plan out my use of my red containers is I'm always going to have Shakeology at least once a day. Um, I either am going to have eggs for you know, um, a mid morning snack, um, or I might make them into an egg salad for lunch. The chicken and the chicken breasts are great to use for any meal, whether it be lunch or dinner. Um, you know, just as a piece of chicken or as chicken chopped up on a salad or chicken salad. Um, same thing with the tuna and then the Greek yogurt. Um, I often will use Greek yogurt to, as an evening, um, 
dessert type snack if I have gotten to the end of the day and I haven't used up all my containers in the red category. Okay. So next up is purple. Um, I get two purple containers per day in our house. We always have bananas in the freezer. We have a bunch of oranges from the Florida, you know, orange trees here right now. And then we had a few strawberries left. So from a fruit standpoint, since I only get two a day and I always use a banana in my shake in the morning, I pretty much only get one piece of fruit per day. <clears throat> and right now that's going to be oranges. They're easy to grab. I don't have to do anything to them. I just, you know, slice them up and eat them. Okay. So that one's done. Yellow. This is a category that um, it can sometimes be tricky and tempting to overindulge. But we had a bunch of sweet potatoes on hand. And then in the cabinet, we pretty much always keep steel cut oats, lentils, brown rice. And then in the freezer, we keep these <clears throat> thin pieces of bread called sandwich thins in case you really get a craving for a sandwich. Okay, so what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to bake a couple sweet potatoes just to have on hand as side items that I can, <clears throat> excuse me, microwave as a side for whatever I have at lunch. And then for a couple of the sweet potatoes, I'm gonna dehydrate them into sweet potato chips uh, since I do crave something kind of crunchy every now and then. And those are a very approved way to get a crunchy snack. <coughs> excuse me. As far as the other dry goods that you can cook, um, I think it's good to have these on hand, although I don't eat them very often, I usually, use my yellows in some sort of a potato form. Um, but steel cut oats are an amazing option for breakfast. Um, lentils make, you know, a great side item for dinner. Same thing with brown rice. And then there again, if you wanted to have a sandwich of some sort, you know, a chicken sandwich, chicken salad sandwich, or egg salad sandwich, those sandwich thins are a great way to minimize your use of yellow containers for bread. Okay, we're almost done. Blue container. In our house, we don't eat that much cheese, but we do always have some shredded cheese in the in the crisper um, for putting on top of eggs or on top of other vegetables, etc. Mostly I use up my blues in nuts, either almonds or walnuts. And then one thing I need to add to this is avocado. Since I only get one blue a day, I kind of have to ration it out, but I absolutely love to have avocado on hand to add to whatever, a salad, or it's a great snack just to have in the afternoon. Okay, the orange container and the teaspoons. This is for your oils and your seeds. So we have some pepitas, uh, pumpkin seeds left over from our cleanse last week. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we have some dried fruit in the cabinet in case you wanna add like dried fruit to your oatmeal, etc. And on the teaspoons, I typically will use these if I'm gonna eat it as a snack, I'll use it with almond butter. Um, otherwise, the teaspoons are really intended to be used for oils for cooking, okay? so. My point in showing you this is that this is how I plan out my list, right? I have, I have to eat a lot of green containers in a day and a lot of red containers in a day. So I have a big list of options here. And at the beginning of the week, I will cook up a bunch of this stuff, put it in Tupperware and stick it in the fridge so that me as a person that works full time, um, is pretty much always on the go. I like to have food available that I can just microwave. Okay, I don't need it super fresh. I just want it cooked and ready to go so that I don't have to think about it when I'm standing there in front of the fridge hungry. Um, with these other options, you know, this can be anything that you like from the food lists in your eating plan. Okay, it doesn't have to be what I've listed here. Whatever it is on those lists that you like, stick with that because you're going to be more likely to, um, to eat it. But I do recommend, you know, keeping in mind, right, that if you only get two servings of fruit per day, you don't want to go to the grocery store and buy like six different kinds of fruit because it's going to go bad and it's going to waste your money and it's going to be very tempting to eat more of it. Okay. Same thing with the yellows, right? If you only get two yellows a day, pick out one or two yellow type um, foods that you get to eat on that plan and have those available, but don't, <clears throat> you know, spend a fortune on specialty pastas and all that sort of stuff when you're not going to be able to get to eat but a very little bit of it each week. Okay. I hope this helps. What I would recommend you do again is figure out what, how many of each container you get, make a list similar to this of the types of foods that you want to have on hand in your fridge and in your pantry. And if you don't have enough stuff at home, go to the grocery store and shop for those things that you've put on your list from the approved food lists in this booklet. Okay. When you get home, then we can talk about 
uh, how you would go about preparing some of this stuff in advance and storing it in the fridge so it's available for quick meals on the go and you can plan uh, your menu, so to speak, for the week. Okay, so hope this helped guys. I will talk to you soon.